Okay, so next Adrian is going to talk about databases and ORMs. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Adrian. I'm, uh, I'm a web developer. I uh, work a lot with um, databases. And um, I'm going to tell you a few words now about a project that I've been working on in the last few months. Uh, it's called Searchlight, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a UR, it's an ORM. It's, an, um, it's basically a database persistence layer for uh, Julia objects, also known as an ORM, so an object relational mapper. Basically what it does is that it allows us to uh, very easily persist and retrieve um, Julia objects um, just by um, making them work uh, together with Searchlight. Um, it's, it's very simple to, um, to add persistence to them. The way that normally an application works if we don't use an, an ORM is that we have an application layer where we define our types um, and then if we want to persist them, we're gonna have to basically handle these uh, objects, extract the data from them, uh, create the SQL query, uh, maybe uh, input the data and concatenate all sorts of strings to, um, to create the query, then um, uh, work with a database adapter and at the end just execute the query and send, uh, send the data back to the database. And then when we need to retrieve it, we're basically forced to do the same process in reverse. We have to, to, com to come up with a query, run it against the database, get back the result, and then do something with it so that it, uh, it works with the logic of the application. So pretty much the way things are now for, uh, for a Julia developer is that um, uh, a programmer is basically uh, forced to handle with all this uh, <coughs> gray rectangle where we have the application logic and we have the types and then we have to deal with writing the SQL and then we have to work with one of the database adapters and um, basically we have to manage all this funnel from our object to, um, to the data storage and then back. <coughs> However, um, if we decide to introduce Searchlight into the um, application logic, basically then uh, this one is gonna be responsible with um, encoding the, the objects or just taking care of uh, the fact that they are persisted and making sure that they are properly retrieved. So basically this frees the developer from having to write any kind of SQL and instead it provides an API with methods that allows us to just manipulate objects. So um, <coughs> I can say things like save uh, my object and then that's gonna make it uh, persistent into the database and I can send find or random or all and then I can pass in various um, query parts and then the searchlight is gonna create the query, it's gonna send it to the database and it's gonna bring back the result. Uh, as a consequence, um, and the reason why I decided to, to develop Searchlight is that it provides a considerable performance boost in that as a developer you can focus only on this side of the, of the, of the application, so focus on the logic, define our types, and then just augment a little bit so they can work with, uh, with Searchlight, and then Searchlight is gonna be responsible of all these parts, so basically you don't have to, to write any SQL and you don't have to worry about the backends and how the data is being persisted. Um, so then um, it comes with a set of features. Uh, it's got a powerful query builder and SQL generator. So um, through this API, if we combine it with our object, then it's gonna create um, um, queries, um, both for, for storing, persisting, and for, uh, for retrieving the information from the database. It's database independent, so it supports now MySQL, Postgres, and SQLite, and I'm working on adding ODBC and JDBC support. Uh, it's not only that, but um, also um, it's um, database adapter independent. So for example, in the beginning, it was working with Postgres uh, JL. Now it's working with a different library and um, you can just swap them in and out and uh, the API that is being used in the application is just gonna stay the same. Um, it guarantees data integrity, so we can define application, le uh, application level validators, basically. We can say that maybe some fields of our um, uh, of our type, of our object, needs to be maybe non-empty or maybe we have an integer field, we need to have a certain value and we can define all these validation rules in the, in the, uh, in the application. It provides powerful DB schema versioning, which means that we can develop scripts in order to modify the database, to uh, create tables, to alter the tables, and then um, the migration system is just gonna be careful to run this migration in order and apply them to all the members of the team. 
uh, it can perform automatic data serialization. So for example, if we have um, um, a field which is um, maybe a dict or another type, um, we can tag it and we can tell Searchlight that we want it to be stored maybe as JSON serialized. And then uh, it's gonna take care of retrieving it and uh, rebuilding the dict. Uh, it provides rich life, cycle, uh, rich life cycle events, which means that uh, we are able to define callbacks and ho hook into the um, um, life cycle of, of uh, the search like object so we can be notified when uh, things happen, like for example, bef before saving or after recreating the, um, the object, and then we're able to perform transformation of the data. So it's basically trying to uh, make common operations simple and uh, complex operations possible by providing uh, access to a high level API, but uh, also to the lower level API when we can access the uh, underlying data frames, we can access the query builder to get the, the SQL queries. Um, so it can be basically chained with other uh, tools in the data processing uh, pipeline. Okay, it's gonna, yeah, there's one final. Uh, this leads to improved productivity. Uh, it's going to feature-proof the apps because it's, uh, it's, the code is not dependent of a, of a backend. It frees us from the risk of SQL injection by automatically escaping the input. It guarantees data consistency and schema consistency. Uh, it promotes a clean architecture uh, development style and it provides access to uh, Query Builder API. <coughs> Uh, the way it works basically in a nutshell is that if we have a type which has some fields and then we have a table which has some columns, once we map the, the fields to the columns, uh, pretty much Searchlight is going to take care of uh, pers persisting the data from, um, from the object into the corresponding um, columns in the database. And then an instance of our type is going to be corresponding to a row in the, in the, in the corresponding table. And then, which means that it's going to persist it and we're going to retrieve it from, um, from the database. Uh, then I have a, a Jupyter notebook that I wanted to show, but uh, obviously there's no time. So um, if you want, you can just go get it. Uh, it shows everything. It, it presents the API. It shows how to build an app with Searchlight. And uh, it goes over pretty much all the important things. Uh, current status uh, is that it works. I've, I've been using it in my projects. Um, it got some, some good coverage for backends. Uh, the performance is okay. Um, it's, uh, it works with Julia 0, 0 0.7 and Julia 1. It's still lacking some, some docs and tests and I will try to improve that. Uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's got limited production usage and if, if you want to, to try it, um, there will be bugs, so probably there's gonna be need to contribute. And I know that query, query engine can be improved to take advantage of uh, adapter specific optimizations or things that can be done faster. Uh, do I have anything else? Questions? So we do have time this time. So. Any questions? Um, so I have one. Uh, I right. saw the, oh, sorry, that was one? No. Yeah. So I saw the Jenny sticker on your, on your laptop. Uh, do you use it, no, are you developing with yeah. Jenny? Okay. No, I developed the, the Jenny framework. Okay, and are you and using this while yeah. for? Yeah, exactly, yeah, this was part of it and then I put it apart because I thought it would be useful as a, as a separate package for other people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does it handle structs with like, um, array field members? Yeah, they, they'd have to be serialized. Uh, it just so, serializes them as a single yes, like, column yes. value? Okay. Yeah, I'm also working on, uh, on a relationship API. So basically, if you're gonna have two tables which are represented by two types, then you're gonna be able to define relationships between them. Like but, foreign key and that Yeah, exactly, stuff. that actually okay. works. So you can define a join entity and you can, you can tell them and then you can access one of, the, uh, you know, one of the entities through the other ones by means of the relationships. But if you want to have digs or arrays, then the best way is to serialize it. So it's going to store it maybe like yep. a JSON serialized string, and then it's going to build it back. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's thank the speaker once again. Thank you.